I, I would love us to be as interactive as possible. I'm sorry. Um, because we're going to talk about basic writing techniques, uh, speech writing, presentation, and anchoring of events. So, um, we all belong in NSITF. 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 Okay. It's a little different from uh, tech, the tech fund. Or? We are both funds, but we are not. We are both funds, but we do not fund equally. <laughs> All right. So let's begin by establishing the protocols that empower. the process by posing some questions. So let's take note of these questions, right? So if we are uh, trying to develop a speech or a write-up for whoever, these are the things we should take note of because they will guide us in, in, our, in the process of um, working on the script. The first is, the first poser is, who is doing the talking? As in, what's the stature? and status of the personality for whom the speech is being written. Is it the CEO? Is it the COO, CFO? Is it the president? Is it the vice president? So once we are able to have that at the, at the back of our minds, it would help us to Freeze and frame the narrative. Am I with you? Yes, sir. Because quite often what happens is that the we do not write the speeches for ourselves. We write the speeches for our bosses. Abby? Mm-hmm. So the president goes to Anga, the United Nations General Assembly, and the speech is developed for him. Hmm? Um, our chief executive officer goes to some event, and we are urged to do a speech that we will present there. Right? So, we have to have at the back of our minds that whoever we are developing the speech for, it's an assumption. I want to assume that that is part of the reason that we're here. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah? So, let's, let's have that at the back of our minds that we are writing for somebody for somebody who is either the chief executive officer, the chief finance officer, the chief operations officer, who is else, uh, maybe the president, the vice president, uh, senate president, or whatever. So, right? Are we, are we clear on that? No. Yes. Okay. The next thing is, and very crucial, is who is being spoken to. All right? What is our target audience? Who are we addressing? 
Hello. Yeah, thank you. Are we talking to just corporate affairs persons from NSIT? Are we talking to the general public? Or are we talking to the entire world? So, we, we have to be able to define who exactly constitutes our target audience, right? And it's very crucial because that will frame our narrative. Apart from the fact that there is the Oga up there, right? But whoever it is that we are talking to is crucial to our presentation, right? So can we now interactively try to see who constitutes our target audience here? Is it the woman? Do you know where your boy is? Okay, I didn't say we'll say market. Is it everybody there that we're talking to? Or are we identifying specific persons within that space that we are talking to? So right from the beginning, in developing our scripting, right? We have to have at the back of our minds who we want to address, all right? Because it does help us to <coughs> it does help us to um, what's the word now? Um, structure. Huh? Structure the language, the narrative. Yeah, because if, you, if, you, if you're talking to the Oyimbo market or the Wuse market person, the language that you would use would be different, wouldn't it? If you're talking to somebody in this hall, the language you use would be different. All right? Okay. If you're addressing the world at the United Nations General Assembly, the language will be different, right? Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you got to know who your target audience is. Please, let's keep that at the back of our minds. Now, the other thing, we, we mentioned two already. We said, who is doing the talking? Whether it's our CEO, who is being spoken to? Our target audience. The other point is, of course, what is being spoken? What is being spoken? What constitutes the subject matter or subject matters? I'm not limited to just one issue. I'm saying that anytime we stand up to speak, we are addressing quite a number of issues, all right? So those issues constitute the subject matters, all right? But from the subject matter, we distill a theme, a theme, a theme. And the theme helps us to identify the messaging. Okay, let's break it down now. Um, there is a subject matter. All subject matters. That, that as, in, as in, there are issues that we want to focus on, that we want to address. All right? Hmm?
Act constitute, I thought I was losing my voice, okay. Each of those issues would need to be distilled into a theme, into a message that at the end of the day would hit whoever has listened to us, right? Can we take, you know, uh, specific examples from NSITF, for instance? Uh, Social Insurance Trust Fund. Can we? Okay. My microphone is here. Let me hear. Yeah. Say um, the MD of NSITF is trying to address the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, the the union. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to address them because they are more like part of our clients. So the speech, who is speaking now is the MD of NSITF, Fine. who is being spoken to is road the road transport worker. What is being spoken about it would be uh, trying to get them to register or come on board the employee's compensation scheme um, because of the large number of accidents that, that they are likely to have because the scheme in itself provides compensation for injuries associated with work. All right. Are we, are we on the same page? Is there some attitude to what our sister said? We're all NSITF, aren't we? I have a, I have a microphone here. Let's, let's, eh? my use of the word, the Agberos, we know that we're talking about, to them, about, you know, getting into the process. All right. The other point that we must note after this point is the fact that how is the speech or the message being delivered? Right? So if we are if we are working up on to the National Assembly, um Market or whatever else that we need to address some persons, whether we have identified that is our chief executive officer or chief finance officer or any other big or guy at the top, how do we want to deliver the message? Are we delivering the message in very high falutin I speak big grammar. Obscurantist. That's big grammar, right? Okay. Dogon Turenchi. Eh? Big, big grammar. Or in simple, straightforward, comprehensible language. How do we relate with those our friends that we are talking to? So that's something we need to keep at the back of our minds in developing a speech, a, you know, a narrative by whoever. All right? So if, if we take the example of our sister who mentioned um, road transport workers, also known as eh? Ocho Passenger, also known as Agbero, also known as whatever. Yeah. So in what language uh, 
I will likely to present that. So you now find that you are not likely to always speak English. You're not likely to always speak Dogon to the entry. Sometimes you will need to speak even pigeon. Pigeon. Right? Sometimes you need to speak your own language, dialect, to reach out to your audience, your target audience. Right? <clears throat> so it's not casting stone. It mustn't be plenty grammar, plenty English. The point is that you have the person speaking, the person being spoken to, and the person who is hearing you, and the language that is being that 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 the messaging is being rendered, right? Do we want to try some examples? Can I get the microphone from my brother here and hear from one or two of us on 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 the possibility? Yeah, I heard it. Yes. From dying. Eh, eh, okay, I thought you wanted. Yeah, okay. You wanted to chip in? Yeah. Yes, I said we should make it as interactive as possible. Yes, yeah. I'm addressing the Ocho passenger. Um, uh, in pidgin language or any. Okay. Please, um, sir, may I ask the language I'm supposed to use? Is it the pidgin? I'm talking to the. The are two passengers, the people in the park. Sit down. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, sit down. Sit down. Yeah, I'm yeah so <clears throat> should I use pigeon English? That's the pigeon English. Where are you? I'm in Abuja. Okay, I'm in, um, I'm in Jabi Park. It's multi tribe. And we're going to meet people from everywhere. It's a melting, it's a melting pot. So, pigeon, pigeon English. No, I can use it. I can use pigeon. My people as we day here, so I call make an address you now on ECS, Employee Compensation Scheme, where NSITF now, where they provide them. The scheme be say, as you go work, as you come back from work, or you can't get injured where emanates or where come from the work where you do. <laughs> as you go work, as you come from work, or you can't get any injury will come from as a result of work where they do. Or even any injury will come from the previous work where you do. We then here we go pay you compensation, we go treat you, and we go rehabilitate you, JJ. We know they even look, even if now you don't record rec rec cost some, we go just treat you and compensate you. NSITF, na better life for Nigerian workers. Abi? Okay. Every advert, Abi. Oh, Radio Nigeria. <laughs> Abi? Yeah. He don't not come now. <laughs> oh, except, except that some uh, big grammar in that process. <laughs> but it's interesting that we understand what, what it means to communicate with our target audience, once we have identified 
the target audience. Right? Yeah? We are there, right? Okay. Now, that leads us to the other point, which is that where and when the messaging is being delivered is also crucial. Where and when. So we, we, we are leading from how the speech or the messaging is delivered to where and when. Where and when becomes perhaps the National Assembly, perhaps Wuse Market, perhaps um, New York, right? At the United Nations Conference, whereas at the Governors Forum, Sir? At a Christmas party. Yeah. So, where and when? Excuse <coughs> me. Is the messaging being delivered? The timing and the location or the occasion influence believability and the pungency of our messaging. All right? Are we still taking our Wuse market? Or are we going to some other place that we want to sell insurance? You know, it's very difficult to sell insurance. Aha, uh -huh. you see now, you are educating me. I thought it was just insurance. Mm. A friend who was with uh, an insurance firm, and, and mm? insurance firm, mm. and, and <coughs> Each time he had to introduce himself, he would say, I sell insurance. Hmm? So how? <laughs> you want to sell insurance to me? <laughs> oh, she's insurance? <laughs> ah, OK. Yeah. Madam, can I help you? Yeah. Wonderful. They're selling time to me. <laughs> so, it's, it's not easy selling insurance or social insurance, like you said. How are we going to frame and phrase that in such a way that we can swallow it? Right? Because quite often what happens is that you go up to a person and say, well, insure your car, insure your life, insure whatever. And, and, and they are not quite comfortable with it because they do not understand what we are saying. All right? So we, we've got to be able to distill that, bring it down to the level where the people would be comfortable with whatever you are selling. Time. Let me, let me raise up. All right. Have we got some points uh, so far? Please. Um, so now that we've established some protocols, uh, who is doing the talking, who has been spoken to, what is being said, how is the speech or the messaging being done or delivered, where and where. 
is the messaging being delivered, noting the time, and so on. We need to bring together the target audience and the theme. You know, at the end of every delivery, we should be able to go home with a message. You know, that is the theme. So, uh, President Muhammad Buhari goes to Anga, as in the United Nations General Assembly, and, and, and makes a speech, right? What do we take from it? As in, how would Garba, Sheu Garba, or Lai Muhammad, or Femi Additional, how would they bring it down so that we enjoy what Baba said? Right? So when you are developing a speech for your boss, for your principal, you have to have at the back of your mind what we will take out of it at the end of the day. All right? So get that. So when you have the subject matter and all the issues that we are raising, you know, whether it's Wuse Market, whether it's wherever. Right? Right? Oh, okay. There must be something you have to steal from it. But at the back of your mind is that you have your target audience and the theme or the subject matters brought together. All right? Let me just hint on this briefly because my topic was expanded a bit to involve... Uh, where is Uhiya Legbe? Okay. Basic. Yeah, okay. All right. So at the end of it all, let's keep it, let's keep it short. Let's keep it simple. K-I-S. I didn't want to add another S to the K-I-S so that it doesn't imply something else. K I S. Keep it short. Keep it simple. Don't use long sentences hmm? in writing for whoever is going to deliver. Don't use highfalutin words, alias Dogon Turenchi, so that you do not embarrass. Um, General, General Hassan Kassina. Do we remember him? I think he's only chief. Eh? Chief, you are the only, about the only one here would. I will be vague. General Hassan Kassina was governor of the northern region. Hmm? You don't know him? You've not heard about him? Okay. You, uh -huh. uh, you don't die, shout. Uh huh. Chiroman Kassina, General Hassan Kassina. Yeah. In sixties, in the sixties, so they would write speeches for him in those days, and and then he goes out there and is reading and is reading, and he gets to a point, and there is a word that he can't pronounce, and says. <laughs> eh? And then we'll look for the speechwriter later. What what happened to you? Why? So let's keep it simple. Let's keep it short. Let's not use those words that our prince will not be able to relate with. Hmm? Are we okay? All right. I, I was also asked to speak about um, 
uh, anchoring events. Okay? Big big deal? No. There's there's a simple there's a simple approach to it, which I've always adopted in, in my own case, right? And that is that the audience the audience is one. That large crowd, as all of you are here now, I see you as one. So, at the back of your mind, always have that there. That you are addressing just one person. There's an advert by some bank somewhere. Uh, one, uh, one, uh, is this telling back? Oh, okay, well, yeah. It's that kind of, that kind of scenario, all right? All right? <coughs> is it because the moment you think that you have a large crowd ahead of you, right, you get confused. You get disoriented. Hmm? You are unable to coordinate. Oh, there is that chief there. There is that honorable there. There is that whoever, whoever, senator, etc., etc. You know, so you look at the faces. Ah, that is Obasanjo. Hey. And then you lose your comportment and composure. But the moment you come before the crowd, the audience, and you, you, you collapse all of them into just one person, it helps you. It helps you. So, Whenever you go before a crowd, just note that there is just one person that you are addressing, that you are talking to. And that helps you to deliver your message. You see, because when you are addressing one person, you are able to empathize. Right? Hmm? You are able to relate with that person, right? Just create that human being in your mind's eye and speak to that person. Even standing here right now, I'm speaking to one person. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, really, you know. Yeah, I see all of you. I make eye contacts with you and all that. Fine. But in my mind side, it's just one person, one human being. Maybe somebody that you love, not somebody that you hate. Maybe somebody that you will be frowning now, maybe. But just keep that at the back of your mind. That that moment when you come out there to address the crowd, to address the audience, there's just one person. So when they invite you sometime very soon in the future to address the United Nations General Assembly, hmm? and you're standing there before the entire world, just have at the back of your mind that you're talking to just one person, not the entire world, not Canada, not Nigeria, not India, 